In this video, we're going to go ahead and put together the sound for our game. And that does include also some theme music that we want to have playing in our level, um, as well as one-off things that we might want to apply to certain scenarios. For example, when a player collects a star. So let's start off by importing all of our sound. I'm going to create a new folder in our project window, and I'm going to call it sound. And then I'm going to come over here into where we have all of our sound files, and I'm just going to drop them right into our sound folder. Now that I have that, I definitely want to make sure that um, all of these are not 3D sounds. So I want to uncheck the 3D sound from each one of these. So I'm going to go there, hit apply. Um, yeah, let's load all of this stuff from memory and hit apply. It's kind of annoying that you can't multi-edit these for whatever reason in Unity. Hit apply, hit apply, hit apply, hit apply. So I'm just unchecking the 3D sound for all these guys. Okay, so in this game, I want to have different uh, support the possibility for different uh, theme music per scene. Um, so per level can have different uh, theme music playing in the background, as well as the menu and all that fun stuff. So that's actually pretty straightforward to do. Uh, let's just take theme and click it, drag, click and drag it right out there onto our level, and then I'm going to. Um, uh, we're just going to keep it on, as that little sound icon. And then we're going to hit loop, and we're going to make sure play on awake is set to true. So we don't have to worry about any of the 3D sound settings, because this is not a 3D sound. As far as the 2D sound settings, we'll just want to keep the pan at zero. Then let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. You guys can hear that, but there definitely is sound coming from this. All right, sweet. So we I can't hear it. I'm sad inside. <laughs> well, there definitely was sound. It was it was happening. Um, I might want to set the uh, volume maybe down to 0.5. Let's see here. I think 0.1 is a good is a good volume for that. So let's just set it to point 0.1. And that is how you add a looping theme music to a scene. It really couldn't be any simpler than that. But now we want to go ahead and add sound when particular things in the game happen. So as you see, we have things like if um, the bad guy shoots, or if the cannon shoots, or if there's an explosion, which happens when I want the explosion to be instantiated when, um, uh, for example, the uh, uh, projectiles blow up. Uh, we have health and jump pad and player hit, player shoot, star and theme. Let's start with our player shoot and our player hit. So in order to do this, what I have to do is go into my player class and add a couple public properties for audio clips. Then I'm simply going to do the audio source dot play clip at point and essentially instantiate a audio um, source in our level and have it automatically destroy itself when it's done playing that sound. That sounds like exactly what we want to do. So let's go ahead and jump into our player and um, add our player hit and our player shoot. All right, so let's come here into player. I'm going to add two public audio clips for player hit and another audio clip for player shoot. And maybe I'll name them differently. I'll say player hit sound and player shoot sound so that they look a little bit nicer as far as their names go. Then once I have these audio clips in, I just have to play them at a certain point. So let's scroll down and find our take damage. And that's what happens. Uh, that should be where our player hit plays. So how do we play it? Well, we just do audio source dot play clip at point, and we're going to pass in uh, player hit sound, and we're passing transform position as our position. But our transform position actually doesn't really matter because this is a 2D sound that won't have any fall off or anything like that. But I'll just pass in the transform position anyway. 
Okay, so now that we have that, um, let's go ahead and also actually, let's add the uh, the health sound. Instead of adding it to the health um, boxes themselves, let's go ahead and add it just to the player himself as well. So in addition to our player hit sound, let's go ahead and add another sound for public audio clip uh, player health sound. And then let's scroll back down and find our uh, give health and just say audio source dot play clip at point player um, health sound transform position. That's all we need. Now we need our shooting. So let's scroll all the way down to our fire projectile method. After we fire a projectile, let's just say audio source dot play clip at point passing in player shoot sound transform dot position. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into Unity and hit play and see if we get some sounds. Ooh, I'm gonna pause the video while Unity uh, finishes crashing and I'll tell you guys why. Well, I'll just tell you guys why right now while uh, Unity sits here and freaks out. Um, I actually forgot to set these audio clips to anything and Unity doesn't know what to do. And so it's frozen. I don't know if it's coming back might have to end the task. Nope, it's back. All right, sweet. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make sure that we actually fill those parameters in with something. So I'm going to click on my player, go into my player script, and I'm going to fill in my hit sound, shoot sound, and health sound. So I fill in health, fill in shoot, and fill in hit. Then, because this is a prefab, I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top and hit apply. Let's see what happens. And indeed, we get sound. So yeah, I think that works out pretty well. Um, let's go ahead and add in some more sounds. Uh, so we have our player hit and shoot, and we have our health. Let's add in a star sound. So let's come in here, back into Visual Studio. And this is pretty much going to be the exact same process for every single one of these. We're not going to do anything special. So we're going to come here. We're going to find our point star. We're going to come here. We're going to public audio clip um let's do um acquire sound and then for our acquire sound or how about hit star sound and then on our on trigger enter 2d i probably have been should have been doing this for our player as well but for our point star i'll definitely say if hit star sound does not equal null then audio source play clip at point hit star sound, and then transform position as our position. Now let's come back into Unity. Let's click on one of our stars. And then I'm going to click and drag star into hit star sound. And I'm going to hit apply, so that's applied to all of our stars. Hit play. And indeed, we do get sound. So now we have that all done. Um, we have, uh, let me see, we have health, shoot, hit, star, and theme. Uh, let's go ahead and do our jump pad. So you see my jump pad's up here. here. Um, I'm going to move it down a little bit so that we can actually hit it. Uh, let's, set, let's set it at a Y of uh, 5 and move it down. Then um, I have my jump platform script. So let's open up my jump platform script, add an audio source, and have it play when we hit it. Jump back into Visual Studio, locate our jump platform, give it a public audio clip um, jump sound, and then in controller enter 2D, I'll say if jump sound does not equal null, audio source, play clip at point, jump sound, transform dot position. Let's jump back into Unity. Let's uh, look at our jump platform. We see that the jump sound parameter appears. Let's click and drag jump pad up into jump sound. And let's be sure to hit apply so that that gets changed for all of our jump platforms. Now let's hit play. And indeed we do get Sorry, this is just 
the sound, it's so much more fun. Alright, but yeah, okay, so now we have our sound for our jump platform. Uh, our player hit, player shoot, star, and theme. Uh, now we just have our explosion, cannon shoot, and baddie shoot. So let's go ahead and do our cannon shoot first. Um, our cannon shoot, we're going to apply this to our projectile spawner itself. So you'll notice that our spawner has a spawn effect. Let's go ahead and add a spawn sound to our projectile spawner. And I'm going to do the cannon shoot for that. So let's jump back into Visual Studio. Let's find our projectile spawner. Or, um, sorry, what did I call these? Our pathed projectile spawners. Come up here to our public parameters. Public audio clip um, spawn projectile clip, or sound. Come down in here to update, and let's just add it, the code right after we um, instantiate our spawn effect. I'm going to say if spawn projectile sound is not equal to null, inst or it's not instantiate, um, we could go ahead and say audio source play clip at point spawn projectile sound transform dot position. Of course, I could also add these sounds to my spawn effects themselves, but I kind of don't want. I kind of want to keep it separate. It makes it a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit uh, cleaner and easier to use. So let's jump back into Unity. And we should see our spawn projectile sound appears on our parameters. And let's put our cannon shoot in there. Then let's hit play. Alrighty. So that makes our cannon shoot. Or makes a sound when the cannon shoots. So now we have baddie shoot and explosion. So to do our um, enemy shooting, let's click on our enemy and we'll get, we're gonna make the modifications to our simple enemy AI script. So let's come back into Visual Studio. Let's locate that script. Uh, simple enemy AI. And let's add a public audio clip um, shoot sound. And then the shoot sound will be invoked after we instantiate our projectile in our update method. So then I'm going to say, if shoot sound does not equal null, audio source, play clip at point, shoot sound, transform position. And I'm not going to bother testing that, but I will go back into Unity, and I will click and drag our body shoot onto our shoot sound. Now the last thing that we have is our explosion. So our explosion, I want to have happen when our simple, pro when our pathed projectiles um, get blown up, as well as when our, um, basically when all of our projectiles get blown up. I want them to result in an explosion sound. That means we're going to have to make modifications to our pathed projectile, as well as our other projectile. All right, so let's go, our simple projectile. So let's go ahead and make those two modifications. I'm going to come in here, and I'll, let's do the path projectile first. Let's open up pathsprojectile.cs. Let's do public audio clip um, destroy sound. And then, when he becomes destroyed, which happens twice, I'll invoke that, um, I'll create the audio clip. But because we now have more complex logic when he gets destroyed, um, hmm. Actually, I only want it to happen in this case. The reason is, is when I shoot my microphone at it, my microphone will make the, the blow up sound or the explosion sound. However, I don't want this to make the explosion sound if it um, was hit by a microphone. I only want it to make the explosion sound when it runs out of time or hits its distance. So before I destroy the game object, I'm going to say if destroy sound does not equal null, audio source play clip at point destroy sound transform position. All right, so let's go ahead and do our simple projectile now. So coming into our simple projectile on our um, public properties, public fields, I'm going to say public audio clip destroy sound, and that's going to happen when I destroy the uh, projectile. So I'm going to scroll down to destroy projectile. I'm going to say if destroy sound does not equal null, 
audio source, play clip at point, destroy sound, transform position. Alrighty. So now let's jump it back into Unity and let's hit play. Or sorry, we won't hit play yet um, because we have to go into our simple projectiles. We have two of them that we need to set the explosion for. So we'll come in here, we'll click and drag explosion onto that simple projectile. We'll click on our red saw projectile and we'll click and drag our explosion onto that destroy sound. And then we'll click on our pathed projectile and we'll click and drag our destroy sound, our explosion sound onto that. Hit play. I think that um, wraps up some really basic sound that we can add to the level. And um, I do actually want to make one little change. See, I miscalculated how the 2D sounds and 3D sounds would differ. Um, I do actually want some of these sounds to be set to 3D. So the theme will be 2D, obviously. Um, the jump pad, the player hit, the player shoot, that's all fine being 2D. But I want the explosion to be 3D. I want the cannon shoot to be 3D. I want the baddie shoot to be 3D. And I think that should be all I want to be 3D. And the reason for that is... There we go, that sounds a lot better. And the reason that sounds a lot better is because... When you move the camera away, or the audio listener away from those those uh, sounds, I want them to kind of fall off and be, not be so uh, loud. Because as they stand as a 2D sound, when you move halfway across the level, they will still be audible. And also, just to normalize the sound, I guess we could just go ahead and make everything a 3D sound except for the theme. You can tell that I'm really not an audio engineer in any sense of the word. So let's just go ahead and set them all as 3D. Why not? Of course, we do not want the theme to be set as 3D. Um, make sure that we have the theme uh, properly set up. OK. OK, I think that sounds a lot better than it did before. But the important thing to understand is that these are things that we can change after the fact. So yeah, I think that wraps up our sound.